our overlying theme has been transformations, the idea that you can do anything to any set of points. And remember we've talked about that there have been two sets of transformations. This set over here that we haven't talked about a lot would be when things do not remain equal. Now, you are gonna see the word congruent today. Congruent for our purposes right now, we'll talk about this more in depth, well, is pretty much the same thing as equal, okay? And then on this side, we have when things remain equal or remain congruent, and those are called isometries. So you either have a transformation where things remain equal or they don't. There are four types of isometries. We have learned about three of them. Remember, they are reflections, translations, which are also slides, rotations, this is our second time dealing with rotations, and today we're going to learn about the fourth trans or isometry, which is called a glide reflection. A glide reflection is the fourth. Essentially, a glide reflection is made up of a translation. Translation and a reflection. Um, some of the symbols you may see is if I want to translate a triangle or glide reflect a triangle, I may see a T for we're going to translate it after we reflect it. So we will reflect it over a line like we always have and then there'll be a vector there that we can translate it with. Now this is interchangeable. We can translate it first and reflect it second. That order doesn't matter at all. And I'm going to do a quick example here of a translation so if you need to pause and get these notes down go ahead and do that. Okay, a glide reflection. So, I may have a reflecting line, and then there may also be a vector. The vector could be over here, it could be over here, it doesn't have, it could be anywhere. And then I'm just going to have a triangle, A, B, C. Now, in order to glide reflect, I'm going to have to translate it. I have to translate it and reflect it. Now it doesn't matter which one I do first. I could reflect first, translate second, or translate first, reflect second. I'm going to translate first because the vector is on this side. So I think it's easier if the vector is on the same side to just translate first. And my ruler appears to be missing. So remember that what we do in order to translate is we have to measure the vector so we know our magnitude. My initial point to my terminal point, this vector has a distance of 8. 8 units for me. You guys will have to measure your own. Then, so that means I need to move parallel. I'm going to move each point a distance of 8. I'm going to call it C prime. So the translation part is done, which we all know how to do. Now I need to reflect the A prime, B prime, C prime. I'm going to do that in a different color. I need to reflect that over this line, over my reflecting line. So get it at 90 degrees and the same distance. Sorry if I'm blocking. There would be my A double prime. Do this quick with C. This is a distance of 19, so I need to go. Okay. 
and then B. I don't think I did my A very well, but. I think I need to review the A. It did not turn out very well. And there is my glide reflection. So, you translate it first and then reflect all things you know how to do. Now, if you notice, we only did one reflection. The translation kept the orientation the same, but then when we reflected, you got to remember that orientation reverses. So, with a glide reflection, it will preserve the ABCD angle measure between this collinear and distance that reflections do, but it will not preserve the orientation. So a glide reflection is a lot like a reflection that it does not preserve orientation. So now we're at the point where we have four isometries. Two preserve orientation, two do not. Reflections and glide reflections do not preserve orientation. Translations and rotations do. I always say if it has the word reflection in it, it will not preserve orientation.